Yo, what is going on, guys? We're back again with another video. It is I, the greatest battler of all time, Blunder. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I, I give that one at least a nine out of ten. That was it was better than it was better than my false swipe gaming intro. <laughs> I'll give you that. It was better than mine. That was a good one. <laughs> guys, we're here today. The Blunder False Swipe Gaming collaboration. We've always been tapped in with False Swipe Gaming. A beloved member of the agency since the early days. Everybody knows our first classic. I think it actually won an Oscar, the, the ice type videos. But after that, it was such a good video that we decided to just give everybody else a chance and not cook up anything. But finally, <laughs> I hit up False Swipe Gaming. I said, bro, we need to do some videos. They're so fire. And so we're finally back. We did one on his channel talking about the Paldian forms. Awesome video. And now we're back here today. And we're doing one talking about the Paradox Pokemon. First off, we have the past forms. So, yeah, just super happy to have my boy back on the channel. You know, we don't we don't collaborate too much, but my boy False Swipe Gaming, good to have him back. How's it feel? How's it feel, sir? It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Dude, I watched you and Joey kind of like in the shadows and I kind of just steal your teams and play. But it's good to actually like be here to talk about Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to tell you all right now that my boy FSG... Is learn he he knows only half of these Pokemon. <laughs> Every time we look at these Pokemon, he, he, he's he's more surprised than me. So yeah. this is gonna be a blast. Yeah, like I've definitely only been seeing like Great Tusk and Roaring Moon and Valiant. But yeah, this will definitely be interesting to look at. I like how only Dawn Fan and Volcarona have two. Yeah. It's it's what you told me before, right? It's like with the exception of Dawn Fan, the you told me before, the rich get richer. Why did Volcarona, an already amazing Pokemon, get two more? Why yeah. did Salamence, who got a banned form, get a new form that might even get banned again? <laughs> so yeah, should we, should we jump right into it? Yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, so for the past forms, we're going to start with, honestly, I think yours and mine's favorite of the past, Great Tusk. Literally, dude. Like, th this Mon, like, at least for singles OU, this Mon had 31% usage in, really? the, in, in, the, in the two weeks of the game. That's crazy, right? Yeah. One in three teams are featuring this Mon. I mean, design-wise... It's amazing. I always said that it looks like Toxapex, Mamoswine, and Donphan. It looks like all three of them together. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. It, it does, but, yeah. It, doesn't it? Doesn't yeah. it? Dude, people, people be telling me, they're like, I don't see the Toxapex. I'm like, dude, it, it has the Toxapex. It's the purple. Yeah, it's the purple's face. <laughs> Literally, yeah. And then he's got Mamos Tusks, and then he's still Donphan. But we never had ground fighting until now, right? Mm -hmm. And we've been waiting on this typing forever since it's like the offensive like godsend. And it turns out that... It was a good thing we waited because this thing has no switch-ins whatsoever, right? Right. I gave it, you know, Headlong Rush, the new move? Of course. Of course. 100, it's the, the ground type close combat. So they gave this guy two forms of close combat for his stabs. He's got awesome support moves with Rapid Spin, Stealth Rock. One of the few guys that can still knock off. And yeah, Stealth Rock, Rapid Spin, knock off, all good. Ice Spinner, that's another one that I like because you're able to hit the flying types. Also able to hit Garchomps and whatnot. And we go over this guy's stats and they're out of this world, right? 115 HP, 131 attack, 131 defense. This is like Melmetal again to me. Like this is such a fun Pokemon to get going, especially because you can also run that booster energy item on him and give him plus one attack or plus one speed, depending on, you know. I saw one guy, he ran no attack EVs with booster energy. So he could get plus one speed on his great tusk. And then he was bulking up and rapid spinning. He was bulking up, getting plus one attack, plus Wait, one defense. Yes, then he was rapid spinning and getting plus one speed. He was going out of control. Oh my god. He had the first dragon dance in Great Tusk, bro. I didn't know what to do. That's insane. I'm telling you, it was insane. But yeah, and even defensively, physically defensive is really good too. If you max out his defense stat, I think he hits 397 defense stat and then 434 HP. Like this thing is far bulkier than Skarmory, Swampert, stuff like that that we used to see. I use this a lot as like my ground counter and my fighting counter if I go physically defensive because you just can't kill this guy with anything. Yeah, like whenever I think Rapid Spinner for this format, I think Great Tusk. Literally, dude, because yeah, you look at Singles OU and the, the greatest hazard removal or hazard stop, uh, hazard spin blocker. That's my guy. We got Golden Go, right? That's the best way to do it. But Great Tusk is already faster and he won to KOs him with either Headlong Rush or if it's Balloon, you can just knock off on the switch. So Golden Go obviously can't switch in on Great Tusk at all. So that's why I love Great Tusk. It makes sense he's the number one mon in the metagame by usage because in a metagame where everyone's spamming hazards, you know, Glamora, right? Yeah. Comes out, sets up all the hazards. It's got a stupid ability. Great Tusk just beats all of those. And so I think it's going to stay like a top five usage mon in OU for a long time because mm -hmm. this is our new Landers T. And also this is way better than like Excadrill was in generation eight and seven. 
Extra Drill in Gen 5, of course, a whole different beast. But this thing is way better than Extra Drill was in Gen 6, 7, and 8, I would say for sure. Oh, Great Tusk is... He's out of control. He's, he's definitely my favorite Pokemon. Just consistency-wise, this is like the gold standard, I think, of consistency. And as a direct upgrade from Donphan, who is also a spinner, but like not nearly as strong as that. And, it, and it's crazy, right? Because Donphan was literally a good Pokemon in old generations. Like he was, he had his role. He was UU, or not UU, but he was like RU, I think, in Gen 7. Mm -hmm. And even in Gen 8, he had a use heavy duty plus rap heavy duty boots plus rapid spin i feel like don fan has always been quite decent in the past metagames so I, it's pretty awesome that they gave him two new forms in of course the one we're talking about great tusk and then iron treads and both are awesome competitive wise so that's really good to me he just looks so threatening and his stats are awesome when i saw this i was like please don't do it do not give him base one speed and base 2000 defenses and then they made him fast and i was like thank you thank yeah. you so much game freak <laughs> thank you so much they made it yeah, like that was honestly like when I was watching one of your videos, that was honestly one of the coolest things I saw was like you hit spin, you spun the hazards away and it was like, okay, I win now. <laughs> Dude, that's, 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 that's how it can be with great times. You get the rapid spin. Not only did you remove the hazards, but now you're plus one and the guy has 360 attack. Like it's over, it's over when that guy comes in. His moves are just, it's just too good. All the combat, everything great Tusk got is going for it in a good way. Mm -hmm. So. I value it a lot. You can also run so many items. The booster energy, which gives you the uh, X 1.3 attack. Rocky helmet, which is great for switching in on U-turns and body press and whatnot. I've seen assault vest too, which I think is really cool. Body press too with that defense. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Stab body press. So a lot of times I was running full HP, full defense, impish nature. And then I would terrestrialize into a fighting type with my great tusk. And I'd be throwing off the strongest body presses you've ever seen. <laughs> you can switch in for shit because, you know, there's like 400 defense that. Like defense who? We don't need that. We don't need that. <laughs> Literally, we don't need that. Tusk is fun, dude. He's, he could just he could just get everything done. Gave, but they... All right. Next up, we have Brute Bonnet, a prehistoric version of everyone's favorite regenerating, sporing, annoying little mushroom among us. Among us. Dude, like, I love this guy's design, I gotta say. Same. He, his design is so funny. They really, like, th this design was one of my favorites. When I saw him, I was like, did they really make an offensive Amoongus? Because my mind cannot even register the idea of an offensive Amoongus. Meaning. When I saw when I saw the design for, what's it called, Paradox Amoongus, and when I first saw the leaks, they were claiming this was called Oongabungus. Oongabungus. So, <laughs> Unga when, when I saw the leaks claiming this was called Unga Boongus, I was like, dude, this is going to be on all my teams. And then I saw the stats and I was like, this isn't even bad, bro. 111 HP, 99 each defense is good. Grass Dark is not that good defensively. We've seen that very many times in past generations. They tried with Zarud, gave him a good stat distribution. And even then, this typing, the 4x week to U-turn, they love this typing at Game Freak, dude. Yeah. This is their favorite typing. The, the, they even yeah. gave it to us Wo Chen too, but... Meowskarata. <laughs> yeah, Meowskarata too. Three of them is crazy. I don't know what they were cooking. It's this, the same guy who makes the fire ghost types and puts three new ones of those per gen is definitely the one deciding to put the, the grass darks too. It was after they fired the firefighting guy for every fire starter. <laughs> they had to kick out the firefighting guy, <laughs> replaced his ass with this guy. <laughs> he literally took that guy's job. That's too funny. But yeah, Brute Bonnet, 127 attack is good. I actually like this mod because his move pool is awesome. Like support wise, he gets a lot of stuff that regular Amoongus got. He still has Spore. He gets Sucker Punch, which is really cool too. Can't go wrong with priority, especially because this guy's slow as shit. Mm -hmm. I was using this on the ladder actually with Joey. I don't know if you saw the video we did, but I, we I had did. loaded. The, the, yeah, the you see, we had loaded. We had loaded dice. Loaded yeah, dice, loaded yeah, dice. Yeah. <laughs> loaded dice. So you always hit four or five bullet seeds, basically giving it a very strong stab move. We had it in the sun, obviously, so we get the proto boost, so he's not too weak. If you're not running bullet seed, I think you should just run the booster energy. But yeah, we had spore, sucker punch, bullet seed, crunch, I believe. But did you know that this guy gets access to the move close combat? No, what the hell? Yes. <laughs> yeah, somehow, somehow, I don't... I, see, I'm not going to ask you where the arms are, because I'm going to assume those little Pokeballs on his side are what they call arms. But I guess the, those are his arms, and he close combats everybody, so... He, he's interesting, bro, and I told you I lost a Terra Blast Fire one time, as I brought in my own Amoongus to handle him. And his defense is still fantastic. 111, 99, 99, certainly gets the job done. But I haven't ran really a defensive set, because Amoongus is definitely better at that. How do you think this compares to like another really strong physical mon like Breloom that also has Spore? Yeah, so I won't sugarcoat it. 
This guy is definitely a meme compared to Breloom and other offensive dark types of Sucker Punch and that kind of thing. I'm definitely more of a fun mon. But I think he does have like some like reliability because Sucker Punch is pretty cool. But I would definitely say Brew Bonnet is more of a fun Pokemon. And when I had him in OU, oh, we had Growth actually. Growth, Bullet Seed, Sucker Punch, Crunch. That's what we had in the sun. Funny, funny set. But as you said, Breloom definitely outclasses this 99% of the time. Because you'd rather have Mach Punch than Sucker Punch anyway. Right. Because Sucker Punch is prediction focused. Mach Punch has no drawback. All right. Next is Sandy Shocks, a prehistoric version of Magneton, which I thought Magneton was a man-made Pokemon, or maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm not really clear on the lore, so I'm not going to question it. Well, this is the ancient relative of the man-made Pokemon. Well, apparently. And so Magneton and Magnezone, at least in singles, has historically been the I'm here to kill Skarmory and I'm dipping. And then I'm dipped. I did my job. Now, <laughs> if I do anything else, it's a bonus. That's really how it was. Who was the guy in Gen 3? Fortress. Fortress. They used to trap him. They used to trap him too. Uh, Magneton, I mean. But yeah, for the most part, that's what that's what they were confined to doing. Just trap, trap, trap. In Generation 8, Magnezone definitely was one of the best mons because he had that iron defense set. He was one of the premier counters to Melmetal. I also took care of other steel types like Corviknight, Cartana, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. now we have Sandy Shocks, and this has a completely different role. I was actually really curious as to why they didn't give us the super magnezone instead they gave us the super magneton super magneton but sandy shocks is cool i love the uh, electric ground typing offensively but defensively this typing is weak to everything bro yeah. earthquake ice beam surf like how many common moves are you going to be weak to with this typing that is the one thing that i really feel pain with when i use sandy shocks his ass is not taking no type of moves so everything is super effective versus this guy but on the flip side this offensive typing is really awesome, I'd say. Like being able to Earth Power, T-Bolt, Volt Switch. To mention, I don't know how many times you've seen Sandy Shocks, but I've been recently running Spikes on mine or Stealth Rock. So he still has the support options too. It's like, even if a Pokemon can't kill what's in front of them, now that they have Spikes and Stealth Rock on almost every ground and rock type, at least you can get those up and, you know, bring momentum your own way. I will say that Protosynthesis is a really great ability on this. I was running Choice Specs on my Sandy Shocks, with Protosynthesis alongside Torkoal Sun Support. Like, cause that's just how it is with these Proto guys. You can run them with Torkoal and you can get a lot of mileage out of them. And then what's it called? I had Choice Specs and then I just had to drop his special attack a couple of EVs so that the speed is one point faster. And then basically when you send out the Sandy Shocks and Sun, the Protosynthesis activates. You got plus 1.5 speed and then your Specs too. So it, it turns Sandy Shocks into quite a fearsome attacker cause a lot of Pokemon or, or teams in general in singles at least, they completely ignore offensive electric types because there's not too many offensive electric types in general. There's Iron Hands, but that Pokemon is very slow. That's the Paradox Hariyama. So it's not like you have to be that worried about the electric more so than anything else. But Sandy Shocks is a fast electric type. It's hard for a lot of teams to handle that, especially because there's only three good ground immunities too. Dragonite, Rotom Wash, and Corviknight. Corviknight can't come in on electric type moves. Neither can Rotom Wash. And Dragonite is a one-time switch. So... Sandy Shocks is definitely underrated. Like, his defensive utility is close to zero, but the offensive stab, I think, is excellent. Like, the defenses aren't too bad. It's 85 HP, 97 defense, 85 spadef. So, like, it's not terrible. Like, it can live a neutral hit, but it, it does suck how weak it is to common types. Like we were saying, Earthquake, Water type, Ice type. I would, I would have liked a lot more immunities or resistances on this. It really isn't covering too much. But the fact that he can just use his stab moves, as long as Lander's T doesn't come back for the time being, this is very good. Because when Lander's T comes back, we can't Volt Switch that guy and we can't Earth Power that guy. And my boy Sandy Shocks is never being used again. Yep. So I'm proud. I'm proud. <laughs> don't bring Lander's back. <laughs> don't bring <laughs> Please Landers don't bring Landers, Landers, Landers back. back. We'll have fun with Sandy Shocks until Lander's comes back. All right, next is Screamtail, a prehistoric version of not Wigglytuff, Jigglypuff, because usually Jigglypuff is more popular. I mean, Screamtail is probably just if you put Melee Jigglypuff into a Pokemon game. That's actually mad funny. I, I scream every time I see Puff when I fight it, so I <laughs> fight it, so. <laughs> That's a good way of looking. This is literally Melee Puff. Historically, I mean, Jigglypuff's an unevolved mon, so I don't know. I've, ne I've never played a Jigglypuff in my 10 years on Pokemon Showdown. I don't think I've ran into a Jigglypuff before, bro. Not, not even a Little Cup? No, because there's, there's a baby one of him in Little Cup. Oh, that's it's the Iggly Igglybuff. Oh my god, you're right. And there's a baby one of him. Oh. I can't believe I knew who that was. <laughs> so I'm, actually I'm actually impressed by myself knowing who he was. I didn't remember. Oh, even, uh, even, yeah, who's the big guy? Yeah, Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff. I think I saw Wigglytuff one time because he got the fairy, the fairy typing in the later gens so i think i saw him one time with stealth rock in like nu or something but other than that 
Jigglypuff is a unf is a forgotten mon. They just they they he's just a fan favorite. Yeah. And he's broken in melee, so I guess that's how they balance how bad he is in mons. <laughs> yeah, facts. <laughs> All right, so what can you uh, what can you tell us about Scream Tail? Dude, it's it's actually really decent. Uh I mean, obviously, offensively, nothing's going to really happen with 65 stats, but 115 HP is extremely high. We were talking about that's the same uh, HP as Tusk, great HP, uh, same HP as other mons like Annihilate, just really bulky. 99 defense stat and 115 spadef. So defensive wise, like you can see they, they really didn't skimp out on anything. Like he's very well distributed. Fairy Psychic is awesome defensive typing too. Weak to Ghost, weak to Steel, weak to Poison, but... Other than that, for the most part, you have a lot of good resistances too. Like psychic moves, fighting moves, dark moves, bug moves. Like, there's a lot of Pokemon you straight up just wall. Like Roaring Moon, for example, gets cooked by Screamtail. You can't crunch Screamtail. It's only going to do neutral. Dragon Claw doesn't do anything. U-Turn doesn't do anything. You have to have Iron Head. So, I like Screamtail quite a bit. The speed, 111, is also amazing on a support mon. Because I think only with, like, 16 EVs on your Screamtail, you're faster than Jolly Breelum. So, I think even if you run... 120 no not even 120 evs you can run like 112 and you're faster than jolly dragonite and you could still run a plus defense nature so the spread i was running like i was saying with the other protosynthesis mons i get the most mileage out of them when i put them with torkoal but i was running a physically defensive scream tail and when you max out his hp he hits 434 and then if you max out his defense he can actually hit 297 and then you get the plus one defense as well from Protosynthesis in the Sun. And I was able to switch this thing in on King Gambit, Great Tusk. Like, for example, I brought in Screamtail on King Gambit, and the Katow cleaved at 21%. Only and then 21%? You're able, I'm telling you, only 21%. Oh Screamtail is way bulkier than people give credit for. Yeah, dude. It has Stealth Rock, Wish, Protect, Encore. Like, the, the support moves are great. If, if they gave this thing Moonblast or Knockoff, it could have been probably double as good as it is. But the fact that it has to rely on Dazzling Gleam, which is a really unremarkable stab move, as opposed to Moonblast, which would drop the special attack of Golden Go or Chi Yu or whoever wants to switch in. Yeah, having Moonblast would have made it way better. And the knockoff also would have been an amazing support option. But I'll settle for Wish Protect because all the recovery moves got nerfed this generation. But Wish didn't, right? It still has 16 PP. This thing's HP is sky high. So I find passing Wishes really easily, especially in combination with Torkoal. I'm able to pass wishes off to him pretty easily because, you know, he doesn't have any reliable recovery whatsoever. And then on course, so you're not a sitting duck versus, you know, Dragon Dance, whatever. Right. All in all, he's, he's a good support mon. People should try this out. I think they would really enjoy the amount of support this can give for a team. And especially right now because everyone's spamming hyper offense. Screamtail is very hard to kill with a plus two move. As Encore, like I said, like he, he, can, he can surprise you a lot. A very common turn that happens in OU is like, if Screamtail comes in, people will automatically, mindlessly go to their Golden Go. Because Golden Go in general is able to take on all support moves, doesn't have to worry about anything. But if you pass a Wish, well now they're in an awful situation because regardless of what they click, you'll likely have a Pokemon that can tank and get back all its HP. And now they're in the back foot. So, Wish passing for that reason is awesome. It can give you a really good footing in the game and it eases prediction a lot. All right, next we have the best Pokemon in the format for three days, Fluttermane. Yeah, so I think in three days, this guy had 40% usage in the metagame or something. <laughs> it's That's just insane dude, stuff. And it's, literally insane. It's based on Mischievous, not Miss Magius. You know, like Mischievous. Like Mischievous has historically has been, you know, Mean Look, Paris Song. Yeah, I think it was Gen 2, right? That's yeah, what it, that's what you were using? Yeah. 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 yeah, he was good at his job, though, in Gen 2. He would get the job done for sure. Yeah, and then Miss Magus debuted as a UU Pokemon, if I remember correctly. Pokemon in Gen 4, right? Yeah, Gen 4. Yeah. I feel like Miss Magus is more close to what Fluttermane does, which is be fast and kill everything. I mean, Miss Magus to a, to a degree is like the exact same as Fluttermane. Like if you look at his stats, Fluttermane, it has 55 for the first three stats and then 135 for the last three. If you look at Miss Magus, it has 60 for the first three stats and 105 for the last three. You take advantage of the good ability with Levitate and ghost typing purely is good defensively as well. You just spam Shadow Ball, has all the support moves, Will O Wisp and whatnot. The Miss Mages was always a really good lower tier ghost type Pokemon because of the speed. But now we have Fluttermane, who has Protosynthesis and is Ghost Fairy and as a base 135 attack. Yeah, so before this, the only Ghost Fairy we had was Mimikyu, which definitely had its role because of its epic ability, but his stats weren't that remarkable. This, this is like, this is like Dragapult and Tapu Lele in one Pokemon. 
That's how I felt when I used this, which that is crazy, right? Because yeah. both of those are beyond strong and nearly unbeatable alone. This is this is both of them combined. The ability on him, I think, is why Protosynthesis and Booster Energy was like, in my mind, in the beginning of the generation, I was like, Booster Energy might be overpowered. But I think it was really because Fluttermane would come in with Booster Energy on every set and it would drop down on the field at 607 speed. Yeah. Like that alone would invalidate so many Pokemon. Like it outspeeds Scarfers and Dragon Dance, even Dragon Dancers after a plus one. Yeah, like plus two Dragonite is completely screwed up by Fluttermane. Plus two because... Oh, plus you, two is faster than... Plus two. Oh yeah, plus God. two is still slower. You can't extreme speed it because it's a ghost type and they have a super effective fairy move. Like it's... This Mon would uh, invalidate a lot of setup Pokemon just because he... Like it alone would come in and outspeed everybody. And you only really need the dual stab, right? As uh, generations went forward, they beefed up Ghost and Dark type moves. Mm -hmm. So Shadow Ball becomes less and less resisted. No Pursuit in Generation 9. And it doesn't matter with Dark types because you'll just Moonblast them. Still gets access to Mystical Fire. So you can hit Golden Go. Uh, not sorry, not Golden Go. Corviknight, Scizor, you know, stuff like that. This guy. <laughs> it has, uh, I think it had Calm Mind too. I ran Sub Calm Mind, which is really good too. You can Terrastalize into whatever. I think I had Terrastalize Steel. That way I could bait like fairy type Pokemon to Moonblast me. And then I turned into a steel type and I set up on them. Yeah, this this alone just made so many Pokemon not worth using. Because, I mean, it's really hard to to make a team and not use the Pokemon that comes in at 607 speed. And then also has 135 special attack. Two of the best stab moves of all time on the special side. Like, he, yeah, you could run Subcall Mind. You could run Specs. You could run Scarf. In the end, this Pokemon was pretty overbearing for the metagame so it's always tough when something gets banned but as far as things deserve to get banned this thing i i think it, it couldn't have stayed around in the metagame like it was too much yeah i i agree mm -hmm. but i'm happy that they made it so powerful right like yeah i like that too even if amon is so strong that it gets banned it's fun it was fun seeing them like break the game with this yeah i like that I it's fun to see the the limits get pushed because like we don't really we haven't seen mischievous in a higher tier for like a long time yeah, nice. even Miss Magius, you like you don't really see that guy. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Slitherwing. S Slitherwing, based on Volcarona, another Mon who gets two Paradox forms, just like Don Fan. I love this guy's uh, design. He looks more like Wormpool to me. Yeah. Than he looks. <laughs> yeah. well, every time I see this, I think it's Wormpool, and and I'm like, wait a minute, Paradox Wormpool? Yes. About <laughs> time. <laughs> Finally, we've been waiting on this. I actually just used this in a tournament uh, the oh, other really? day, Slitherwing. Yeah, it's 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 quite good. Fight uh, Bug. We've seen that before with what? Heracross? Heracross and Buswell. Oh, and Feromosa who ended up getting Feromosa. banned. But yeah, but Buswell was really great. Last generation especially. It was able to, you know, roost up, just be a good physically defensive wall. Obviously, we don't have potential for that anymore. We got this full-on offensive one. So 135 attack. So a max attack adamant, which is what I always run. The shit hits 405 attack. So this is stronger than stuff like Dragonite, Tyranitars, like he's strong, has access to close combat, first impression, which is, you know, one of the best moves any Pokemon could ask for, and it's stab, U-turn, which is, you know, great, great support, and it's, again, still stab, and then, other than that, he has access to Flare Blitz, Earthquake, I have only really run Choice Banded on my Slitherwing, because I like getting the most damage off, but as you can probably tell, I've been talking about the other Protosynthesis Mons. Obviously, I used this guy with my boy Torkoal to put the sun up so he could get the Protosynthesis boost. Mm -hmm. And when I was running this thing, every time my Slithering would come out, bro, it had like 850 attack. Jesus because of the Protosynthesis and the Choice Band. Yeah. And then you could Terra type into anything. So then actually in one game I was playing earlier on the ladder, I, I mispredicted. And I brought in my Slitherwing, predicting him to double switch out. But he had his Hatterene and he went for a Calm Mind. My Slitherwing terrestrialized into a fire type and one hit KO'd Hatterene with Flare Blitz. Wow. It's and nothing nothing one hit KO Slitherine, right? right? Slitherwing is but Slitherwing is he's really, really good. I think U-turn specifically in this metagame, in the fast paced, like hyper offensive singles metagame, where getting the turns right is so important. Being able to U-turn predicting the right switch can sometimes just instantly win you the game because then your positioning is just better off in an offense versus offense game. Mm -hmm. And first impression, it forces so many mind games, as you can probably guess. So you had Terra Fire and Sun and, and Sun and, and Flare Blitz and, Flare and Choice Blitz. Band everything yeah everything. You the had whole every shebang the whole shebang every I I was trying to make him Primal Groudon yes <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying my best to turn him into Primal Groudon I had everything possible on on the Flutter Wing but close combat gets the job done I was playing against a guy he had a, a defensive Garchomp my U turn did fifty percent like this Mon doesn't really have good switch-ins at all definitely an underrated pick 
in the current metagame. Bulk is good, 105 special defense, definitely can tank some hits. The speed is a little mediocre, the defense and the HPR whatever as well, but like we were talking about before, concentration is what matters. This thing has an extremely powerful stab priority too. 135 attack certainly gets the job done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Slitherwing is, is one of my favorites, I would say. Really just, it's a fun mon, right? Like I, I like throwing out these powerful close combats and first impressions and he can break through all of his counters because he has Flare Blitz or Earthquake, whichever you want to go with. This right. thing really doesn't have a counter. Like defensively, nothing can really tank this except for, I think Skeledurge is the best bet unless you have Earthquake, but yeah. Right. And Slitherwing is good. Only because of like Unaware too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it KOs Hatterene like that, I don't think this thing has a lot of switch-ins. Exactly right. Yeah, it's and another big thing is everybody likes using the quartet, the dark type quartet. This guy first impressions all of them, and they all die. So that's very nice. It does have bulk up, and it does have flame charge. So you can do that. It has morning sun too. I just haven't had time to test like a a bulk up set with those moves. I don't think it's bad by any means. It also gets will o wisp. So support moves are there, but. When you compare it to Volcarona, I just think they're a lot different because Volk, Volk, either you run Quiver Dance, three attack, offensive, and you just break all the holes. You can run defensive too, as we saw in earlier generations. You know, Volcarona would come in on U-turn or it would come in on Melmetal, double iron bash, try to fish around with flame body. So the wing is different, more of just like a super hole breaker in the opponent's team. Volcarona definitely has more defensive utility, I'd say. But when I say one is like better than the other, I don't... I don't know yet. I wouldn't say that one is very clearly better than the other in the current metagame. I'd say Volcarona is easier to use though, for sure. Everyone knows how to use Volcarona. You give it heavy duty boots now, you set up Quiver Dance, and if anything, Volcarona got even more evil this generation because they all terrestrialize into grass types, and then that Giga Drain KOs everything in its path. That's what happens now, so. But yeah, Slithering, I like it a lot. Choice Band is my favorite though, by a mile. All right, next we have Roaring Moon, the Mega Salamence number two. L literally, uh, <laughs> Meg Mega Salamence version 2.0. I'm still recovering from the beast that was Mega Mence, but somehow Paradox Roaring Moon has it has 590 BST instead of the other guys who all got 570. I guess they decided to make one of them their clear favorite, and that's Roaring Moon. But I mean, yeah, the offensive stats are godly. 139 attack, so he's the strongest of all of them, even stronger than Koraiden for some reason, and 119 speed. So he's not the fastest, but He's the fastest of the OU legal ones, so we'll say that. Dragon Dark Typing. We've seen that how many times before? Just Hydreigon, right? Yeah, Hydreigon, yeah. Yeah, so this is Hydreigon number two, I guess, but it's the it's the physical rendition. So when I first used this Pokemon, I was thinking it was a little bit overrated because I saw its physical defense was really frail. I was killing because I was spamming Breloom and stuff like that. So I would always want to KO with Mach Punch or my Scissors Bullet Punch or whatever. But over time, I stopped using Dragon Dance. A lot of people were running Booster Energy plus Dragon Dance, and they were turning this thing into a, uh, a Terra Flying type and spamming Acrobatics. So you can think about how strong that is, right? Yeah. Booster Energy instantly gets consumed. Then your Acrobatics is double charged. You turn into a Flying type. Like that, that was a really annoying mod. But over time, I started like really trying to make use of its better moves, like U-Turn. U-Turn, like I was saying, it's just amazing to run. Choice Band Roaring Moon is now for sure the best set. Mm -hmm. They just spam U-Turn, Crunch. They terrestrialize into a pure dark type. It's very similar to like the other offensive dark types in the metagame, like Chien Pao and whatnot. They're just spamming off their stab moves. Roaring Moon does a good job of it. On top of that, his special defense stat's really good. It's 101 base. So Chi Yu, who's like the most annoying special attacker, is not able to 2-hit KO Roaring Moon unless it's Specs. And if it's Specs, it's not faster than Roaring Moon. So it'll get 1-hit KO'd by Dragon Claw. So I really do like this Choice Band U-Turn Roaring Moon personally right now. I think that guy, he just, he just covers so much in the metagame. Defensively, solid. Offensively, solid. Design, goaded. Just, it just gets the job done, you know? Because Salamis used to run Moxie, right? And Dragon Dance and stuff? Yeah, Scar for uh, Dragon Dance really only. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if it wasn't that, there was also like special menses. Like yeah, Draco. Mm -hmm. But this one doesn't really have that. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting because his special move pool is amazing. Like he gets Fire Blast, he gets Hydro Pump, just like regular mens. But his special attack is base 50, so it's absolutely unusable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the attack stat is sky high. I've even used Adamant sometimes for when I'm feeling really greedy. And that hits 414 attack because the speed is still damn good. Outspeeds the base 100 mons, even with an adamant nature. So, yeah, Roaring Moon is is likely the best, like, remaining Paradox mon in OU, alongside Tusk. 
Roaring Moon, Tusk, and Valiant are the big three. Another thing I wanted to mention is last generation, we were seeing more defensive Salamences in UU. In OU, no one really used Ments. But in underused last generation, there was a lot of heavy duty boots, Intimidate Salamence, and I think it used Defog and Roost a lot, and it had Flamethrower, and it basically was like the Scizor counter in lower tiers, and it was able to remove hazards forever. Oh, it also beat Excadrill. So yeah, defensive Salamence definitely had a purpose last generation. Not sure how it's going to work this generation, but I honestly don't think it would be that bad, right? Flying type, heavy duty boots, Intimidate, these are all staples. I don't think Mens can Defog anymore though, so that's bad. I don't know if it can roost either. It can roost though, right? Yeah, it learned roost yeah. by level up, so that's good. But Roaring Moon for now, I don't see it getting banned for now, even if it's the best, if it, if it is the best. I mean, that's up for interpretation. I don't see it getting banned as the bottom line. It's good, but it's not Flutter Main, so we're fine. It's not Flutter Main. Banded, Dragon Dance. It even gets, uh, you know, Jaw Lock, the move. It's the 80 base power Dark type move, and if, they, if you use Jaw Lock against the opponent, you're both trapped for the next turn. So really? I think jaw lock is pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, it could obviously work out badly if you jaw lock like Great Tusk and now you're trapped with him. <laughs> but I did see one guy running heavy duty boots, jaw lock, and then U-turn. So even if he mispredicts, he can just U-turn himself. And the opponent can't double switch out because they're jaw locked. Roaring Moon is usually faster than everybody because he's 119 base speed. So when I saw that, I was like, this is actually kind of genius because you basically stop all their momentum. You get the absolute freest U-turn ever. And it could, it could it makes some good mind games. So jaw lock, got to give a special shout out to that. The jaw lock, I actually, one of my bros, I saw him lose on the ladder once to defensive Roaring Moon. He went into one of his mons thinking he was sacking it. The guy clicked jaw lock and then terrestrialized into a steel type and got plus six dragon dance. And my bro got six, my bro got six owed. It was hilarious. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about it for Roaring Moon. All right, cool. And then finally we have the last Paradox Mon, which is the box art legendary for Pokemon Scarlet. We have Coridon, who is a prehistoric version of Cyclozar, which, you know, Cyclozar is a new Pokemon, so we don't really have developed information on it. It's Shed Tail of the Pokemon. Yeah, so how's the Uber's landscape now that stuff like Fluttermane and Houndstone are there, and we now have these new legendaries? Well, I think I like Coridon a lot in Uber's. Like, I was uh, I was tweeting about this, and Coridon and Maridon, when you put their ability plus typing into the equation too, I think that both of them are, they might be better than like any other Mon we've seen. Like better than Arceus, better than Mega Ray, better, better than Zacian. And Zacian obviously was nerfed heavily this generation, right? With the ability nerf, um, attack stat drop and all that stuff. But this ability is, is out of like, it, it's one of the greatest abilities we've ever seen. You summon Sunny Day, and then also on top of that, you get an automatic 1.3x attack. Uh, yeah, and then you can run an item. So this <laughs> and you can run an item, of course. Right, and, and Maridon's even more broken because Coridon isn't a fire type, but he sets up the sun. Maridon's an electric type and sets up the electric terrain and gets the 1.3 special attack. So it's just like they, they they did as much like multipliers as they could with these Pokemon. It's like it's it's huge Mega Rayquaza vibes to me because the ability plus these stat distribution and then you're able to run an item on top of it is is outrageous. That's, but yeah. Coridon is really, really fun. I was using it in Ubers. It's one of the best sweepers I've ever used in any tier, especially because you can terrestrialize. Uh, he gets great moves. His signature move is called Collision Course. It's a 100 base power fighting type move, and it's 1.3x effect, like 1.3x stronger if it's super effective. So that's just an interesting added on little effect, but 100 base power, 100% uh, accuracy is great. He's got access to Dragon Claw. He's got access to Flare Blitz, Flame Charge, U-Turn, which is really cool too. Yeah, like this guy is a really interesting Sunsetter. It's not like something we've seen before. Groudon didn't U-Turn, you know? Groudon didn't do shit like that. This is like 135 speed, 135 attack. The, I like Maridon more than this uh, as a Pokemon. I think Maridon's actually just a little bit better, but this is a better sweeper with Swords Dance and Flame Charge, I think. I think that's like one of the hardest things to check in general in Uber's tier. Coridon is Coridon's actually pretty bad into Flutter Main because he has to go for the fire type move. His double stab is immune. Coridon's easy to is really easy to play with and it's it's fun. Like I had to go and play Ubers just because I was like, I'm missing out not using these strong Pokemon. Like I saw the abilities and I was like, I need to enjoy this too. Yeah. I, I, I need to send out a Pokemon and, see, and hover over the attack stat and see that it says 800. And it and it's still itemless. That's what I need to see. You need to enjoy every boost you can ever think of. I'm, uh, I'm actually excited though to see like what happens with these mods because the support that Coridon and Maridon do is awesome. You set up your sun, you U-turn out with Coridon, now you got all these guys who can benefit from sun thanks to Protosynthesis. Uh, I think that's good for Coridon. 
uh i guess that's like our wrap up for what we got should we rank them all right now it's time to rank them i mean obviously karadon is at the top for sure yeah yeah karadon's the best for sure i then think it's probably fluttermane yeah fluttermane fluttermane mm -hmm. question was only around for three days only around for three days and then tusk and roaring moon are really really close but i would say tusk is a little bit better like just a smidge you know then probably roaring moon and then from the last four the more uh, creative bold options for the brave battler i would say screamtail then slitherwing then sandy shocks then my boy brute bonnet at the bottom but don't don't ignore him all right the other guys are just better brute bonnet is not bad but I would say that all seven of these, or eight rather, they all are uh, like good Pokemon in the tier they're in, or even all the proto guys, besides uh, obviously the band guys, all the six protomons that are available in OU, they can all do stuff in OU. I'll say that for sure. They all have a purpose. Even Brute Bonnet can do something. All right, so that's going to be the end of the video. Shout out to the agency. Go buy all their merch. Hey, shout out to my boy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We had to put together another classic going over the mons, guys. It's, I would have never expected, like three weeks ago when I was going over these mons, I was like, all right, great tusk, cool, ground fighting. We don't know anything else. Now the metagame has lit. Now we're like, oh my God, this is the greatest mon ever. It's a complete blast. All right, and remember to leave a like and subscribe to Blunder. Thank you so much for having me. But also, if you notice, we only did the past mons for this video. And we actually have a video on the future Paradox mons over at my channel, False Swipe Gaming. Yes, sir. So go check that out. We're going to be doing the rest of the mons. Love to see you guys over there.